I'd like to give a shout out this morning to the barber of Seville, my barber. They say always start off with a little humor. So that's my humor for today. Because actually I'm going to um, delineate and um, uh, explicate and talk about the highest realms that I possibly can. This is the head of Keta. And in Keta, there are two partsufim. There's um, Atik Yomin, and there's Eric Anpin in Keta. Atik Yomin has two dimensions. Atik Yomin has three upper sapphirot, which are considered rod low. These three sapphirot of rod low, the head, which is not a head, which is not known. Uh, are above and uncovered. So, you know, it's like on Yom Ha Kippurim, you know, it's a covering. This is at the level of no covering. And up there, there are three. Three Sephirot. It's Keta, Hokma, and Bina of Atik Yomin. Now, Atik Yomin means um, former days, kind of like in the past. It's very important here for what I'm going to say. And that's the law of three. So if you've ever heard about the law of three in esoteric thought, that's the law of three, and that's three circles, so to speak. I mean, it's a three is the law of pi. In the Talmud, they call it pi is three. And that's basically the world of circles. Underneath that law of three, in Atik, are the lower seven of Atik. This lower seven is another dimension. That's the law of seven. You know? That's the straight line, so to speak. This law of seven is also, obviously, in a Shabbat mode, because seven is seven uh, days of the week, you know, six plus one here also. But the upper part is the law of three. And in a certain sense, the three is what happens within the seven. The, 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 the three is of a higher level. And it's the circular level. And the other is the linear aspects of time. And the upper aspect of three is the circular aspects of time. This lower seven of Atik Yomin is uh, the inner dimension of 
Eric Anpin, which is the second level within um, Keter, because there are two parts of him in Keter, as I said. And so, the, uh, it, it, it encloses, this 10 encloses the lower seven. It enrobes them. So the lower seven is the inner dimension of an external dimension of the ten sapphire of uh, Eric Anpin. This, this is also very important because um, of the concept of seven within ten. It's also 17, that's tov. So that could be here, but the, the point is that the seven is, uh, is uh, delineated and depicted and um, distributed, uh, is the word, within the 10 of uh, Eric Anpin. And these are what are called the three heads of Keta. The Rodlo, the Eric, the, the Atik Yomin as seven, and the Eric Anpin as ten. And these three these three heads of Keta are given three names. And again, the winded, long-winded uh, intro. These three names are considered for Eric Anpin. They're considered will, Ratzon. They're con uh, for the seven of um, uh, uh, Atik Yomin, it's considered Ta'anug, pleasure. And for the upper three, the three heads that are in Rod Low, the head that's not known, that's called Emunah. Because Emunah is beyond knowledge, can't be known. It's just the faith. That aspect of Emunah is the highest level that one can get. But one of my things is that I've been told what these three heads mean. I've read it, you know, in Hasidus and Arizal kind of stuff. There are three heads. I can tell you there are three heads. But do these words go along with these three heads? Are these three terms the highest terms in Judaism? Is it Ratzon, Tanug, Emunah? Is it will, desire, pleasure, and faith? In a certain sense, in the highest aspects, where we say we have three heads of faith, in a certain sense, each one of those three heads of faith represent the faith of faith, the, the pleasure of faith, and the will of faith. Each of those three heads is a representative of, the, of a dimension of the three heads themselves. For me, it's more important to think of the law of three. And to, at, that is the highest level. The highest level is the law of three. More than expressing it as emunah. 
This is a Hiddish. I'm giving new names to these impossibly high levels of dimensions. It comes down in, in uh, metaphysical thought. I didn't develop the law of three. I mean, Judaism expresses the law of three in the law of the half shekel, the three half shekels. And then, uh, quite frankly, the law of three is expressed in the, in the um, uh, grace after meals. It's expressed in the um, uh, oats. And that you always have to have two of those three. You know, the three oats of, of, of Shabbos, of, of uh, bris, uh, uh, and tefillin. And so you always have to have two of those three. It's the same thing with the grace after meals. So this is a very important thing of having two of the three. This all comes from Rod Lowe, because there are three up there. This is the law of three. Laura's three is best expressed in the three meals of Shabbat. But to me, it's best expressed in the circle, in the Samach. And how we get 60. So the law of three is the highest law. And that comes from Rod Low area. Then we have the law of seven, which is expressed in Atik uh, 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 Excuse me. It's expressed in, yeah, Atik Yomin. And those are the seven lowest of road of a tikyomi. And they form into three lines. Remember, the law of three is now forming into three lines. So the law of the three, which is a circle, manifests downward into three lines. And that's why on the tree of life, you have three lines. You have a right, left, and center. And to depict the tree of life, you have to have center. Now, very often in the law of three up in, in Rod Low, they depict those three in a linear fashion. A Keta, Hokma, and Bina in a linear fashion that like comes out of the center line. And then after that linear fashion of the law of three up there, then it splits in the lower dimensions here into three lines. So it's natural that the law of three of, of, of the center, that the keta stays in the middle, the hokma stays on the right, and the bina stays on the left. And this is the source of the three lines that are that are Hesed, Gavora, and Teferet down the middle. So the source of three lines is the circles. <laughs> the circles as depicted as one line. Is pie. As simple as apple pie. And it's funny that pie is like 22 sevenths, 22 letters of the seven doubles. And 
we intimate this in the in in um, in uh, Sefer Yetzira because there are three mother letters. Then there are seven double letters. Then there are twelve simple letters. So the whole idea of, of all this comes out of the th- three of Rod Lowe into three lines which in which are the inner workings of these ten sapphirot that embrace so that's a- a- Eric Ampen embraces and closes and close and closes the seven lowest of Pharaoh of Atik Yomi. What terms you give for this? So the three of above and the seven below the law of seven, which is expressed in the musical scale as such, as the octave, so to speak, as the melody is a seven, but the harmony is a three because, you know, in most musical things it goes like uh, four, five, one, there are three, three chords. You know, major dominant, major, and then in jazz they do it two, five, one. The two is really related to the four as a minor third down. So the structural chord formation is a three, and the melody is the seven. Three and seven make ten. And that's how we get at Rick Ampen, because that's starting to bring it down, so to speak, into the physical world. Because from, from there we go from Atik, uh, and from Keta, then we go to Atsilyu, starting to bring it down. Give your own name. You know, look at it. See if, if you think that those are the names or are you just repeating like parrot? Polly want to crack up? Polly want to crack up? The three names of the three heads? They're given to you. Do you feel them? If you don't feel them, forget about them. So these three heads, now for me, why are they, why are those, let's forget about Rod Lowe right now. Let's just go into, Rod Lowe is the high, three highest aspects of Atik Yomim, but Atik Yomim is the Patsufim. And Atik Yomim means um, former days. It's kind of like in the past, ancient Ancient days. Ancient days are in the past. And so in a certain sense, it's the Dalit in the back of the tefillin. And Eric and, and that, that's internal now. Eric and Pin. Eric means uh, uh, like uh, long lengthening and ampin this all comes from what they call long breath from the nose which is a whole other story you know but eric ampin means long to the front facing forward sort of so we have a backwards in atik the highest level like going back in time and then the forward of a Rick Ampen going forward. See? 
And so this is the way we walk. The top from the tiferet, from the, from the diaphragm, from the, from the tibor, from the diaphragm area where we, where we do our gartle. Remember, we do the gartle at the diaphragm area, not below the belly button, but at the diaphragm. Because in a certain sense, this is the middle. And it's how we de de delineate, I keep using that word, this is how we divide the back, uh, our backward days and our forward days, and our forward motion. So when we walk, we walk with the legs. Again, the legs start from the gargle area, like in yoga, high-waisted, high-set. And the head and the, goes backwards. So we're actually going back. As we walk forwards, we have a sensation that the, that the top part is going at teak, your mean to former days and the front is going forward in time and that's why we think we're going forward in time but in a certain sense we're really going back forward and back in the same steps and that'll give you the right posture That's what's trying to be shown up there at the highest level, that there's a front and a back. See? Notice as soon as I think of it, my posture's up. Because my, from my rib cage, my diaphragm area, my, where I put my gargle, actually is going backwards. And below that, the animal soul is going forwards. My, my godly soul, my nefesh elokit, is going backwards in time. You are two souls. You have a godly soul, and you have an animal soul. And the beauty is you really have three souls. Your third soul is actually the sikalite, which they consider the three aspects, three highest aspects of the animal soul that can that transforms up into the godly soul. But for me, it transforms even more. Transforms into Rod Law. Nefesh Sikli can transform into Rod Law. And that's how we bring the animal to the highest realms. This is the sacrifice of the Ayil. And the altar, because where was this? This is, this is the, the Ayil, the, the sacrifice of the Ayil where Yitzhak was, is the Evan Shatia. It's the Holy of Holies in the temple, the foundation stone, that foundation stone is in Ab Evan, Aben, Aleph Ben Nun, stone 
It's, a, it's, a, it's an oven. It's a father and son. The son with the Aiel, the sacrifice was heaven. This, this Av, for Aven, Av, Ben, Aven, Av, Av, Ben, Av, of Ben, and Ben, Ben, Bet, Nun. And the three, and the three letters go together, three letters of Av, it means 53, or, or 703, and that's Gan of Gan Eden. And what what makes this Gan Eden is the recognition of this. The recognition and this transforms the individual. This recognition of these states and these locations. What a beautiful, wonderful thing to be in that consciousness to to Explore is going to say to, to sensate that consciousness. Isn't that physical life enough? Does it have to be on the outside? Isn't it outside enough? The physical consciousness to sensate this kind of level. This is a value judgment. So these are the three levels of the highest domain. And in those three levels, it's the manifestation of the three of the highest level. And these are the laws of three. that manifest into the laws of seven. So if you think you're into something with the seven, then see where they emanate from. They emanate from the three. And how do we get this three? The most important way to get it is with a balance of the two which are opposed. Opposed down here. Because remember, the three are in the line up there. So it comes like that. But how to get back up is the key. Back up. Back up and back up. Back up and back up. Back up and back up. And you'll get there.